Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome back to another video for EVE Online. In today's video we're going to be doing something a little bit different that I've not done in quite some time. We're going to be going into an abyssal dead space, but just to keep things fresh and interesting we're going to do so using a stealth bomber. In this case we're going to be using the Amar Empire's Purifier stealth bomber. Now, I love stealth bombers as a class of vessel. I enjoy flying frigates in general, but stealth bombers are just that little bit special for me. We're essentially taking a frigate, one of my favorite classes of vessel, and slapping torpedoes on it, a weapon system normally reserved for battleships. Oh yes, it's kind of crazy, but it is astonishing how well this actually works. Now, yes, I probably will cover the other stealth bombers with time, but for now, the Purifier is the one I wanted to go with. Why? Because despite it being an Amar Empire vessel, I really like this ship. I love how it looks, and especially with the Blood Raider skin on it, just check out that detailing, that sort of deep red and mottled blood color all over it. Oh, oh. yeah, sign me up. We're going to be running Calm Electrical Abyssals with this thing. It's great fun, it's actually really easy to do, and it uses a very different playstyle to most other Abyssal runners that I run, so it's a lot of fun for me as well. If you do find this interesting, please let me know, hit like, and I know that 70% of people watching this channel, according to my analytics, aren't subscribed, so take this moment right now to click that subscription button and ding the notification bell to be updated on more content like this going live. Anyway, all of that said, let's jump right into talking about the Purifier and running this in abyssal dead spaces. The Purifier is the Amar Empire's Tech 2 Covert Ops Frigate, a stealth bomber. This means you are going to need Omega to run it, and it should be noted that as a stealth bomber, it is going to be using torpedoes, a weapon system that you would normally fit to battleships. These do take a little bit of skilling into, because of course you're going to need small and medium missile skills to start with before you can start trading into your large missile systems, like torpedoes, so bear that in mind, that this is quite a hefty skill train to get maxed all the way up. Now on that subject you'll see I am Mastery 5 in this particular vessel, you don't need to try and match the numbers that I'm going to be showcasing in this video in order to get this running, you don't need your skills as high as mine are, I'm showcasing this under ideal situations, and no this isn't the test server, this is just how crazy I am on the live server. So let's have a look at the Purifier. It is a stealth bomber, which means it has a specific set of roll bonuses, notably a 99.7% reduction in torpedo launcher power grid requirement. Now, normally being battleship weapons, these things use a lot of power grid. Thanks to this bonus, you can fit it onto a frigate-sized vessel. Now, some people have said to me in the past, Benzi, why on earth have they done it this way around? Why wouldn't you just give the Purifier mad amounts of power grid? Well, simply put, because you could then just put ridiculous other things on it instead. This really does specify it as a torpedo launching platform. We then also get a 50% reduction in cloaking device CPU requirement, no targeting delay after cloaking device deactivation, plus we have the ability to fit covert ops cloaks on here, and cloaks reactivation delay has been reduced to 15 seconds. You can also fit bomb launchers, which is something we will talk about in a future stealth bomber video, because oh boy, these things can be so much fun. I need to get out with Bombers Bar again, record a video and just showcase how hilarious these things can actually be. Now, being an Amarian stealth bomber, of course, we're getting bonuses from both Covert Ops and Amar Frigate. This is where the Purifier stands. It'll kind of show you what you're going to be using here. So first of all, the Amar Frigate skill. This gives us a 10% bonus to torpedo flight time and a 15% bonus to torpedo maximum velocity. That is an absolutely monumental 75% additional maximum velocity and 50% additional flight time, which means our torpedoes can be going over 70 kilometers. Long range torpedoes, very, very powerful. Covert Ops as a skill gives us a 5% bonus to EM bomb damage and a 15% bonus to EM torpedo damage. Now we're not going to be using bombs on this particular fit, so we only care about the torpedo damage bonus. And again, that is a whopping 75% increase to torpedoes damage. This makes up for the fact that this doesn't have that many high slots, doesn't have many launcher hard points for us to fit those torpedo launchers, but they do pack an absolute wallop. So, surprise 
surprise, surprise, we're going to be using torpedoes, right? And if you haven't guessed already, we're going to be needing to use the electromagnetic torpedoes, i.e. Mjolnir. So we give us a little bit of an idea of what we're going to be looking at in regards to the fit. Speaking of the fit, as usual, I will try to put this down in the description down below. If I do forget to do so, please just politely nudge me and say, Benzi, you've forgotten the fit again, you moron. What a silly belly you are. Anyway, so let's have a look at what we are actually running here. So with the setup we have in total, things are not great on paper when you look at it. So our tank is only 20.4 hit points per second. That's not much. That means we are going to die very, very quickly. And we've only got 2,647 hit points. Oh, yeah, it's a bit of a fragile one, this. We don't have particularly high resistances. We don't have particularly high anything. We are a very fragile little ship. What we do have, however, is an astonishing amount of damage, 4,462 hit points worth of alpha strike damage on each volley from those torpedoes. Admittedly, the DPS looks a little bit low is not the right word because that's still very high for a frigate, 553.4. Remember, these have a long activation time. It does take a decent amount of time between those volleys, but each volley hits for mad amounts of damage. Now, it is worth, of course, noting that torpedoes, as they are large missiles, have really poor application. We've got very high damage, but very low application. Fortunately, that's not going to matter too much, as we'll see later on. So, we're using Torpedo Launcher 2s. These do take a decent amount of skilling into that. <laughs> torpedo 5 is quite a hefty skill train, so you might want to swap these down for things like Arbalests. This will still work with those, but if you can get all the way up to the Tech 2 versions, go for it. It does give you the just that little bit of extra damage, especially from the Torpedo Specialization skill. But you'll see with Kaldari Navy Mjolnir torpedoes, we're getting 77 kilometers of uh, flight range on that, along with 184.5 DPS each. Big, big damage coming out of these. Yes, the application is absolutely atrocious, but that's why in the mid slots we're running a Target Painter. Target Painter 2. You can bling this up a little bit if you want, considering this ship is only 70 million ISK estimated value, including ammunition and a whack of calm electrical filaments as well. It's really quite a cheap ship to kind of run this kind of stuff in. So if you do want to bling it out a little bit, go for it. Feel free. Take this up to a Republic fleet or whatever the heck you fancy for that. Because we need a bit of capacitor stability here, Small Cap Battery 2 gets the job done. It's nothing hugely special. Again, you could bling this out if you want. We don't need a mad amount of capacitor stability because we're actually not going to be running all of these modules throughout the entire thing. In fact, the only thing we're pretty much going to keep on at all times is the Target Painter. You'll cycle the micro warp drive when you need it, and you'll cycle the armor repairer when you need it. The micro warp drive is a 5 mega newton quad lithium fluoride restrained micro warp drive. This just gives us that little bit of extra survivability whilst moving around in the abyssal arena. Our low slots, we've already said, we've got a small armor repairer too here. It is worth having, as you'll see later. It's not particularly much in the way of HP per second, but it will get the job done. You can see 20.4 hit points per second. Really not great, but it is going to help when you take incidental damage. You shouldn't be taking much damage, but you might take some, at which point the armor repairer is just going to help you not go too low with that and make sure that you keep your repair costs down so you don't have to keep repairing your ship at a station, that kind of thing. Our final two slots then, Ballistic Control System 2s, just to push that damage right the way up. For our rigs, we're looking at a small warhead rigger catalyst, again, just to help with that application, alongside small auxiliary thrusters too, because we want as much flight velocity as we can get out of this. This gives us a whopping 2,300 meters per second, and once again, remember, you do not have to meet the exact numbers I'm showing here. As long as you're fairly well skilled into this and you know how to fly it, you will be fine. And knowing how to fly it is kind of key with this one. This isn't just an orbit and you're done. If you just try to orbit with this thing, you're going to lose it very, very quickly. 
but there is just this beautiful aspect to running this ship that normally things like the Charybdis Tyrannos are the longest to kill waves in this in an abyssal dead space this just wrecks them it's actually the other way around. The frigate heavy waves are the ones that take a little bit longer to kill. The bigger the enemy ship is, the faster it goes down, which is just absolutely hilarious. Obviously, on top of what you're seeing here, in the fit you'll notice we're carrying calm electrical filaments. That is going to be the abyssals that we're running. Um, and being inside those, you're going to be reducing the enemy's electromagnetic resistance, which means our Mjolnir torpedoes are going to be doing even more damage. Our electromagnetic resistance is going to be reduced, which is fine because we've basically got none anyway, and the aim is just to not really get hit. We're going to be pretty much kiting and using that 77 kilometer range to our advantage. On top of that, the electromagnetic, sorry, the electromagnetic storm in an electrical filament is going to help us with our cap stability. So we're actually going to be a little bit better than 50 seconds of cap while we're running this remember though again we're not actually going to be running all these modules at once we'll rarely have the armor repairer on at which point we are technically cap stable already once you're in the electrical abyssal dead space you become a lot more capacitor stable thanks to the effects and the bonuses there but hey let's not sit here and just listen to me talk about the fit let's actually showcase this boy in action because oh, 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 this is just so much fun as always, we're going to need to make sure we're in a fleet, and remember we are using three of the filaments every time we do this. Now, immediately on arriving, kind of pick a direction and start to fly in it. We're then going to immediately lock onto everything, hit it with the target painter and start shooting and watch the damage on this. So that ember needle to seller, watch it in the top right. Single volley is going to hit in just a second. It's a long way away. There goes the first hit. Boom. Big, big, big damage. And then our second one almost kills it instantly. We're almost taking these down in two hits each due to the just shocking amount of damage that we're capable of putting out on these. Again, you can kind of do a keep away. You're going to be manually piloting through these. You're not going to be moving close and trying to orbit. You are going to be wanting to try and maximize your range. By being far away from these to sellers, you basically avoid all the damage. And yeah, I'm about to fly out of the arena. This is not, not what you want to be doing early on because watch my health at this point in time. Oh boy. Oh, that's a lot of damage. Bye bye shields. My armor's going all the way down as well. Fortunately, the armor repairer kicks in and we're back into the arena with just enough time. We're okay. We're okay. But try and be a little bit more aware than I was there. Now you'll see, again, we are taking these to sellers down quite quickly. It's like two or three volleys each time to take one down. And if you're keeping decent range for them, if you're like 20 kilometers or further, they really struggle to hit you. They want to be getting close. So use your extreme 77 kilometer range plus your micro warp drive to keep that range. And you'll find you take literally no damage at all from these. Once you get a bit further through the wave, yeah, you can start to move towards the biocompetitive cache and start to maybe even orbit that just to, you know, not fly off out of the arena like we did a second ago. Well worth noting, situational awareness in Abyssal Dead Space is absolutely vital. But you can see here quite comfortably, these Tessellas are really struggling to hit me to the point that my shield is actually passively recharging now and we're quite comfortably through this wave. We've just got to kill this second, this final Ember Needle Tessella. Not a problem. You can see the just extraordinary amount of damage we do per hit with these. It's just, it's, it's just brutal. Occasionally you get really naff little hits like that, but you'll see, boom, down it goes. With that wave done, we can now shoot and loot the Triglavian Biocompetitive Cache. Again, you'll see this actually goes down in one hit. It's a nice big target. It's stationary. We get good application on it. All done. So we're going to loot that cache. Again, you can cycle your micro warp drive carefully here. Make sure that you are reloading any of your torpedoes at this point in time. Just take the time between rooms to let yourself reload, prepare for the next room. Because if you reload now, it saves you having to reload mid-wave in the next room, right? You'll see that I activate the gate and then as I'm sort of turning towards it, that's when I activate the micro warp drive. You kind of want to get yourself realigning before activating the micro warp drive because of the additional mass increase on your ship. Otherwise it means you have a slower realign and you can actually take longer to reach the gate than you would do otherwise. Anyway, I'm looking at the loot here. I'm actually trying to stack it and it's not working. Room two, what do we have? Oh, the Charybdis Tyrannos. 
Oh boy. Oh boy. This is where I get to showcase the sheer hilarity of a stealth bomber. So Cryptus Tyrannos obviously starts injured. I'm just going to target paint it, launch my torpedoes, and just watch the damage we do and how quickly this thing goes down. It is just bonkers how fast a Charybdis Tyrannos goes down when you're in a stealth bomber. We're through the shields and armor, we're hitting the hull already, and we're just doing decent whacks of damage to this on every single volley of torpedoes. Yeah, they take a little bit of time to get there because they're missiles, they have flight time, but Again, think about how long a Charybdis Tyrannos normally takes if you're in something like even a worm or like a hawk or some of the other more common calm abyssal runners in the frigate class. Yeah, they take a long time. That Charybdis Tyrannos cannot hit us. The fact that it's going to try and run away to the edge of the arena, we don't care about. It's, it, it's already dead. It's already dead. It just doesn't get a chance to do anything. So now we're going to go again, shoot the cache, go and loot the wreck. Cycling the micro warp drive here carefully. Once we turn to face, then we'll activate the micro warp drive, shoot in, grab our loot, and move on to the third and final room in this abyssal dead space. I just, I love how backwards that is. I just love how backwards that is that the frigate rooms go down fairly quickly. But it's the big scary battleship rooms that are normally the problem for frigates that th th this just goes lol what and just blasts them. Just blasts them. Should also be noted while we're just looking at the graphics here, you can see that the clouds here in Abyssal Dead Spaces, they're a little bit sort of dodgy in their graphics. That is something that the developers mentioned at FanFest last year. They were possibly going to be updating now that we have the volumetric gas cloud effects uh, for things like Zarzak, that they might actually go back to Abyssal Dead Spaces and gas clouds in the game um, and redo those, which would be really, really cool if they do. I think that will be fantastic. On the subject of those clouds, however, you can obviously use them to your advantage as well. If you know that the cloud is going to make the target signature radius bigger, drag your enemy through it because that will help your missiles apply even better. Third and final room here then, what do we have? We've got Striking Damovic and Striking Kikimura. Damovic is going to be our secondary target, Kikimura, first, because that's the one that's going to deal most damage. And this room can be a little bit scary. The amount of damage that that uh, Kikimura can do to you is genuinely quite terrifying. You'll see that it will rip through my shields quite quickly if I give it the opportunity to. Fortunately, I'm not going to give it the opportunity to. We're going to hit it with the target painter, hit it with those torpedoes, and just blow it to smithereens before we get it gets chance to really start doing any heavy damage to us. It takes a while to lock on, but once it locks on, you can see the amount of damage it does in a single volley there. Now, the Damovic is not dissimilar. Ideally, we want to be having a good amount of angular velocity. Again, you can kite these things quite comfortably. You are actually faster than them, which is worth noting. Um, so you can sort of outrange them if you want. But here I wanted to showcase that actually if I'm just orbiting, if I'm just orbiting that Triglavian by a combative cache, the amount of damage that that Damovic does is reduced enough that my armor repairer does actually keep up with it quite comfortably. Yes, the Damovic is very small, it's very fast, the torpedoes do not apply their damage well at all, which means, ironically, these Damovics are some of the longest kill times in any of these Abyssal rooms. You can see it just takes ages to hit it with volley after volley after volley of massively powerful torpedoes, simply because they can't apply. This is a brilliant dem demonstration of how missile application mechanics actually work in EVE Online. I'm not going to get into that, that's another topic for another video. In fact, I've covered it in one of my EVE Echoes videos, and it's the same maths and calculations in EVE Online as well. But no trouble here at all. You can see our capacitor is stable with everything running. Um, we are just slowly pulling that Damovic down. No questions asked. Our shields are actually passively recharging because our armor is full and that Damovic is just not doing anything to us anymore. It's actually yellow boxing us. But there we go. It's finally down. And that is an abyssal dead space in a purifier. It's ridiculously good at this like it's about seven minutes to do this and that's including the catastrophic boo-boo i made in the first room that could really have cost me the ship so do pay attention to where the edge of the arena is it's not a fun thing to fly out of the arena and lose your ship to that losing your ship to you know being destroyed by the enemy ships is kind of cool it's an explosion that you're like oh okay that kind of sucks but it was kind of fun at the same time flying out of the arena just makes you feel like an idiot so don't do that 
Anyway, folks, let me know how you get on with this one. I will have a look at the other stealth bombers in time as well, but happy sailing, and see you in New Eden.